Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike tech and maintenance related questions. As ever, you can submit your questions down below in the comments section using the hashtag AskGCNTech, and we'll do our best to answer them. Only a lot of time. Yeah, um, Alex and me. Ollie. Right, first question, no dilly dallying. Hi, Armando and Ollie, I'm considering going for wider tires, currently rolling on 28 millimeters, but I'm concerned about the aero penalty of doing so. Um, especially seeing as wheels are optimised for 28mm tyres. So, what I've started considering is going wider at the back, say up to 32mm, while keeping the 28mm up front. This seemed like a great compromise, although I'm now concerned that the larger tyre in the back would also bring the entire back end of the bike up, messing up the angles and my overall position. Is this a real risk or am I being paranoid? I would say, Discuss. right, so one of the big trade-offs here is like the speed at which you're riding and also your weight. It's all very user dependent, this kind of stuff, and it's, and it's very individual. And, you know, if you're a, if you're a heavier rider, yeah. you know, a lot of riders are over like 90 kilos, yeah. then you like go for the bigger tires. Like the higher volume tires is gonna be way better. So if you're if you're riding at if you're riding at like pro level speeds, yeah. you know, if you're riding at constantly averaging say forty five kilometers an hour plus on your rides, yeah, then you need to start being conscious of yeah that that tire aerodynamics um, at the front, and that's why we see in time trials they're still using twenty fives optimized for yeah wheels, makes so sense. Right. But if you're like below that, like if you're averaging say even thirty five k an hour on your rides, it's not such a big deal. Focus on like going for like twenty eight or thirty, like. Yeah. Yeah, I recently experienced 35 millimeter high performance road tires on my normal road bike and normal road bike wheels. And I gotta say, I absolutely loved it. But like, yeah. it didn't feel slow. I mean, it was affected slightly more in crosswinds because you've got a massive tire on there. But don't automatically assume it's A, gonna be slow because of aerodynamics. And I don't think you need to be concerned having a larger tire on the back and a small one on the front for messing up the angles of your bike. We're talking about a couple of millimeters here. Yeah, the aero penalty is not is not huge. And at those lower speeds, you are gaining more um, in rolling resistance and also things like grip. Yeah. You know, you can you caught your corner a bit faster or you you know, things like that. So we've said it in the past, fit the widest tires that your bike can accommodate and you probably can't go too far wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next question, who have we got? Uh, Pete C Pete Seb. Yeah. Who says, Hello GCN Tech. Which tires do you choose for climbing? Lightweight with a higher rolling resistance or heavier with lower rolling resistance? Well, I th I feel like the examples and options that they've given there are actually the opposite way around to what the products would be. Like yeah. A lightweight tire typically has lower rolling resistance and a heavy tire tends to have a higher rolling resistance. Yeah, so well, it I, makes I, sense to choose a performance tire. It's lighter in physical weight and rolls faster. I mean, in, in hill climb races, it's common for riders to fit track tires. Yeah. You know, tires for the that we you'd only use on a velodrome with minimal puncture protection that are super light and super thin and have super high rolling resistance and low that, rolling yeah, resistance. Yeah. <laughs> low rolling resistance. Um and that's you know, I think if if you go for a lighter tire, if it's if within premium tires, the lighter tires are yeah. tend to be the faster rolling. And it's gonna be beneficial everywhere you ride. The only trade-off you're gonna pay is if you start going really extremes, so you're gonna to start to sacrifice a bit of puncture protection. Yeah, but, and yeah. when you look at the, in the case of certain tires, you know, you could run, say, a TPU tube, and that'd save you a load of weight. Yeah. Um, and in because a TPU tube typically weighs 20 grams, that can be lighter than the sealant. Yeah. Because you've got, you got sealant and a valve and so then, you know, you're typically running more than 20 mil of sealant. And yeah, so you, there's a little marginal weight saving maybe if you run a TPU tube. Go for the best tires you can afford. Yeah. There you go. Um, next question in, they say, best drip on chain wax or chain lube for dry conditions in the UK? Looking for the smoothest shifting and protection, protecting the life of other components. Where's it gone? Where's our drip on chain wax supply? So drip on chain waxes are what I would recommend using in the dry in the UK. In terms of different brands, I don't want to sit here and say I'd one say drip in the dry on, anywhere. Yeah, I don't want to say one drip on wax lube is better than another because there are a handful of products which I think perform 
like fairly comparably and they're really good. There's independent testing yeah. out there which shows Zero you what friction the what yeah. one. Yeah, great example of what are the better things. Um, we use the Silka Super Secret, it's yeah. really good. And you know, if you don't want to fully go down the route of full immersive hot melt waxing, it's a, it's a great like gateway drug that gives you a load of the benefits, um, but it's easier to do. Trial and error, I guess. You can choose a few different brands, buy the bottle in a smaller size, and then if you don't find that you get on well with our products, you haven't spent all your money. Yeah. There you go. Um, um, next up, we have Fotsmeheki, <laughs> yep. who says, Hi, Giuseppe. That's you. Yeah. And okay. Ollie. There are tubeless, um, are there tubeless sealants without natural latex? Um, I'm al allergic to latex and it's not funny having to deal with it. Thanks. Um, what, what are you suggesting? Well, there are sealants out there that aren't using latex as the, the base of the product. I think glycol is what you need to look for. That's the two options that you've got out there. The difference between the two, obviously they're made in different ways, but glycol based tubeless sealants tend to avoid drying out and will typically last a little bit longer than latex-based ones. Trade-off for that is, in some cases, their puncture sealing ability tends to be a little bit reduced, but that's if that's not really your focus, your focus is on avoiding the latex, then do it. there you go. Yeah. Also, there's the option, I don't know how severe your allergy is, perhaps you could just use like protective gloves and keep your arms covered. I don't know how severe I know, but you don't want if it sprays out and you get a puncture. There you go. That's actually yeah. a good suggestion. Okay. Um, next is from Ronnie, who says, I have some carbon DT Swiss wheels that have always been rather loud. Ooh. Lately, I've noticed that the hub has become even louder. <laughs> is this a sign the wheel needs maintenance? I think, I think yes is the answer to that. Yeah. Um, the freehub's got louder probably because the grease or oil that was in the freehub mechanism has gradually dried washed up or washed out. Yeah. So um, if you don't know how to do that yourself, we don't feel competent about doing it, head we're, to your local bike shop. Or we have a video. That's the good, good thing is, is that DT Swiss hubs are like, I don't know the exact hub you have, but on the whole, DT Swiss hubs are, um, and especially the more modern ones, incredibly easy to service. Yeah. Like they're really good at that and you can service them without tools. Um, the free hub body pops off, that gives you access to the star ratchet and the uh, the spring, and it's easy to apply grease in there. We have videos on how to maintain it, and the DT Swiss have uh, videos Simple. on how to maintain oh, it, yeah. Good suggestion. They're, they're one of like the easiest hubs to actually maintain. And change the bearings. If the bearings need replacing, it's easy to do again. Yeah. All right. Um, JRG106 next. Do wider tires last longer? If I had some GP5000s in a 28, and the 35, would the 35 be expected to last more miles before wearing out, or does it not make much difference? Well, having just been to Pirelli Mega Base in Italy, I feel like you should lead the way on this. Yeah, and I do have some very interesting things to say. So the first thing is that, well, you know, you, you tell someone, oh yeah, the wider tire is gonna last longer, they go out on a ride and you can have bad luck and you can just slice your tire open on a okay. piece of glass. Like, yeah. It can happen, right? That aside, in theory, a wider tire should last longer. And the reason for that is if you, well, I've seen Pirelli have done a lot of pressure mapping science of tire contact patches, mm -hmm. and they've done this across their entire range of tires. So if you take a big like 295 Porsche 911 rear tire, yeah. right? so that's like a big boy wide, massive tire, yeah. but it's on a car which weighs loads, right? Yeah the amount of pressure that the contact patch of that tire exerts on the ground yeah. is less than the pressure exerted by a 23 millimeter road bike tire. What? So the way to think about it is it's like an elephant's foot yeah. versus a stiletto heel. A stiletto heel exerts more pressure on the ground. Okay, yeah. Because although there's less weight in the person that's wearing, or less mass in the person that's wearing the stiletto the heel, pressure that mass is all concentrated down into a smaller surface area. Okay, so, can we relate this back to the tires yes. now? So basically, <laughs> the implication of that is, and there's numbers on it, so they were saying that like, for example, it was like, you know, around two pascals of pressure when it's um, a cut that big car tire, Okay. versus um, it was like, I think 4.6 pascals on the 23 mil tire. That's crazy. So it's so quite a lot. Yeah. And then, 
the implication of that is that there's actually way more pressure on the tire compound and the carcass, which means you're more likely to get punctures yeah. because there's more force to push the object through into the tire. But also there's more pressure on the compound, which means that the tire wear rate is higher. It makes a lot of sense, actually. So I, if you increase, I had no idea. Yeah, if you increase the width of your tire, you increase the contact patch, you decrease the wear rate. Wow. Moves and the incidence of punches. We should all be switching to wider tires and make them last longer. Yeah, I'm, I will do a bigger video on that because I think it's a fascinating topic. So to answer your question, 35 mil tires. Yeah. Um, right, on to last the last question. The last question for this week is from Clive. They say, Hi, love the content. I've been cycling for about a year now and I'm loving my Ribble CGR AL. Would it be viable to upgrade the SRAM one by group set to a DI2 group set or would I be better off getting a new bike? My current setup performs great, just really want to move on to the next level. Thanks in advance. Regards, Clive. No. Yeah. If it works, keep it. The only reason why I would suggest you maybe change your group set is if you don't want to have one by and you want to have the you know the added functionality of, of, of different of added gears and two chain rings, which can be a yeah. useful thing to have. But in terms of like you know going like a performance route yeah like there's not a huge difference there and it's that classic thing that we always talk about it's like you could spend a load of money doing that yeah but you'd probably get you'd probably have more fun if you spent that money going to Mallorca it's kind of <laughs> like <laughs> you know yeah like, we kind of give the same answer for a yeah. lot of group set questions the answer is don't rush to spend your money on the group set. Obviously, it's a really crucial part of your bike, but if you want to upgrade it, upgrade it perhaps in stages when components start to wear out, and then that's when you can invest your money rather than trying to replace a component that's got lots of life left in it. Yeah, or just change your um, front, you know, get get a front derailleur yeah. and get a, a double SRAM force chain set. Yeah, that's a good suggestion as well. And then you don't have to buy a whole new group set. Yeah. You've got the functionality that you were looking for. There you go. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, right, as always, if we didn't get to your question, apologies in advance, but be persistent. Keep putting it in the comment section down below, and with any luck, we'll get to it in the coming weeks. Right, we're out of it. See you later. Bye. Bye.